In this dramatization, you will meet Frank Taylor, his wife Lisa, and their children, Anne and Marcus. DCF ordered Frank to take an anger management class and for the entire family to attend therapy as a condition of the children not being removed from the home due to domestic violence and alcohol abuse by both parents. We pick up in their second family therapy session. He don't listen to nobody. All he do is run his mouth and yell. I don't even I mean, know. That's Look, how we, we got could, in we the first place. We could have done this at home. We don't have to come here well, and argue about the situation because you were that drunk. you started. Really? Drunk? You were yeah, drunk you and started we lost. Just relax, relax. That's how we got here. Okay. Can we relax? So, so, Marcos, this is good. You're actually asking your parents that they need to step a little bit back and trying to figure out how they can communicate in a way that everybody can listen to one another, right? Mm -hmm. Is this something that you can tell us a little bit about, just so we understand what's come up? I'd rather not with my kids here. We, we know what you guys are arguing about all the time. We all live in the same house. And do you know what your parents are upset about right now? Yep. Yeah. Do you mind telling us? Because Sophia and I don't know. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to put that on your parents or on you, but is there something you've heard? A lot of yelling. About anything in particular, Marcus? You see? You started this. You see this. how this, this is all happening because, because you of can't you. keep your damn temper down. It's because of you. Really? Yeah, really. So one important component here is how are we going to talk? And everybody's gonna listen. And how can we do this in a in a way that yeah, I don't, you, know, I don't know. you can honor each other? I, don't I know, know that this is important, Look, and I it needs to be taught. clearly. I mean, if if, if you keep asking, nobody's saying. Yeah, obviously, you guys already know what's going on. The reason that I'm so pissed off is because when I came home from work, I caught my wife wearing my clothes. Okay. That's not something I'm into. Total shock. I don't condone it, and I'm... Total I, shock? Of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. You had no idea? No. Okay. And so you're still not sure what the hell this means? No, I don't. Okay. All right. Then that's something for us to talk about. There are some things that I think that Davey and I know that are important to discuss, but they need to be discussed separately from what needs to be discussed with your children, right? As you said earlier, Frank, I think you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. But some of this obviously needs to be talked about now mm -hmm. so that you can then have that separate conversation and so your kids are not worried about what this is going to mean for them. So Lisa, this is something that you've been dealing with privately for a long time? Yes. Okay. And. My family is falling apart because I, I need to live in my truth and this I know is hurting him. I didn't cheat on you. So if that's what you're thinking, I did not cheat on you. I still love you. I still. So Lisa, Lisa, just for one second, because I, I, I know you, what you're saying to your husband you really want him to hear how much you care and how deeply committed you still are to this relationship. I think it's probably hard for Frank to hear that right now because he's probably really questioning, is this the same woman who I always thought she was? I am. And I am the same person. I just feel, I don't feel so feminine inside, all right? I, I try to hide it, keep it deep down inside. I just can't do it anymore. And that's, that's something that I think would be very important for us to talk about with the two you of You think adults. that's a good example for my daughter? I think that's why, Frank, it's important that we talk about that part of this issue with the two of you privately. But no secrets, 
Okay? So the important thing for Marcus and for Anne is are our two parents going to still be together? Can they treat each other in a way that is safe and helps us be safe? I mean, I, I think there's more than that, but I think that's the starting point, okay? You know what I think? I think she's turning this family into a freak show. That's what I think. Well, you're so full of crap. What do you mean I'm full of crap? How's she changed? What big deal? She's wearing men's clothes. Ooh. She wants to be a guy. She's you a different person you now? You don't think that hasn't changed? She's a completely different person now. Yes. You see? Oh, she's not the same mom we've had for our no, entire lives. No, because apparently now I have a dad. No, that's I ridiculous. Have two dads. Clothing doesn't make her a mom. Oh, and you're, you're okay with your mom wearing men's clothing? I'm okay with mom being happy. Yeah. Right. Whatever she wants to do to make she her happy. She wants to wear men's clothing. If that's and you're okay with her going out in public wearing men's clothing. If it makes her happy, then yeah. Dad, I, I, think, I think your daughter, I think your daughter can stand up for herself. You're doing a good job of supporting her, but I think that Anne is doing very well in speaking for herself, as is Marcus. Mm -hmm. Anne, I saw your eyes. What's going on? How am I supposed to go shopping for, for girls' clothes? How am I supposed? My mom is supposed to bring me places to go buy girls' clothes. I don't want to go places to go buy men's clothes. I don't want to go buy a suit. If I wanted to go buy a suit, I would have went with my father. I am not a guy. I am a woman. I, my mom is a woman. She's not supposed to be dressing in men's clothes. Watch your mouth. What do you mean? Do not disrespect me. This, you're <laughs> you're disrespecting me. yourself. That's what you're doing. This oh, is, that's, this that's isn't where? A good, no. Really? Yeah, really? absolutely. You want to talk absolutely. about good examples? What about, you know, you're always drinking all the time. That, Great example you got there. What am I supposed to take out of that? I can't wait to go out and get drunk all the time. Mom and Dad, have you noticed how your son and daughter are saying some very similar things to what you're saying to each other? How are we supposed to fix this? How are we supposed to fix this when all they keep worrying about is men's clothing? Like, it's so much more deeper than that, but you stuck on a surface? You stuck on a surface because I'm supposed to make you look good every damn day. Lisa, did you? You're you, supposed to look good yourself. And, Lisa, and you just. You, you, but you're worried about how people are going to yeah, view absolutely. you. Yeah, absolutely. Love me. How about that? Okay. No matter what. Mom, Dad, remember, remember, we're here with your kids. You don't have to make nice, but let's just remember. I think, Lisa, you said something really important about yourself, and then you turned and kind of stuck a jab at your husband. I think that's what we really need to look at. And then you jab back. And I think that's what's not good for your kids. But you said something really important. Can we go back to that? You said, this is about yourself. This is about who you are as a person. Did I hear that right? Yeah. Okay, and this is about being true to yourself? That's all I want. And not pretending? Okay, but when you think about that, does that mean that you can't, and I, you didn't say this, so I'm just asking you, this is not a challenge, this is just a question, paraphrasing what your daughter said. Does being true to yourself mean that you couldn't take your daughter shopping for girls' clothes for her? That's a silly-ass question. Of course I can't. Of course. I'm sorry, I know it's a silly-ass question, but your daughter was asking that. Did you hear that? Yes. Okay, I... and I don't think she was disrespecting you even though the words and the tone certainly might mean that to mom, and that's something to think about. And that's exactly what I was okay? talking about. But I think that what your daughter was saying is, Mom, I don't want to lose you. I don't want to not have a mom. You're not, you're not going to lose me, all right? It's going to take Anne a little while to believe that, Lisa. But that's true. Nothing you've said makes you a different person. You're just being honest about who you are. And for your daughter to have questions about that, that's perfectly understandable. It's because she doesn't want to lose you. I want her to talk to me. I want her to ask me anything. A place of uncertainty is where we, we don't do too well, right? We want some stability. So, mm. so clearly this is upsetting. And, and right now, even though there are moments that you are disconnecting with one another, I can see that there are also moments mm. where you are trying to reach out to one another. 
what you're saying, Lisa, is not that you're a different person. You're saying that there's ways you feel and things you feel have strong feelings about that you've kept to yourself. And you've seen that keeping those to yourself can lead to great unhappiness, just, not just for you, but also for your husband, and worry and fear for your children. So you're doing something very important here. But now I think we need to all step back. The four of us as adults need to step back and say, okay, what is it that we can do on behalf of your children and your family? And can we, can we agree, again, maybe you can't, but can you agree that you as a couple will be willing to talk this through and work this through with respect for each other and not bring your children into that? Because if you can agree I to do that... do whatever it takes, I know my family is falling apart. They're, they're coming together, Lisa. This is your family coming together around the truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's hard. The important piece on how we can move forward, I think, is that we need to take one small step at a time, right? And we need to hold on to each other, mm. try to support each other, accept where each, each of you are, and then keep on doing those small steps. We need to talk about, in the next 40 minutes, we need to talk about how your family is going to go forward and leave this room safely and continue to be a family while you all do this deep reflection. So we need to have a plan for everybody to know that this family is not going to fall apart and that each member of the family is going to invest everything they have in the family as well as in being true to themselves. You think we could come up with a plan for that so that you could walk out knowing that as parents that your children are not terrified that they've lost their family? I think you could do that. Do you think you could? I can do it for the kids, I guess, and that's what, that's for the sake of fixing my marriage. Thank you. And I hope you heard that, Lisa. I did. That's a very strong statement that this man does accept you. He's struggling. Mm -hmm. Take your time. And thank you for being so caring and honest. You can see how much your wife, how much that means to her, Frank. You've just done something that's changed everything. Thank you.